60,000 winters ago, the world was a different place. Broader skies, thicker grass and cliffs that held the mouths of caves like secret hands. A small band of people lived by a river that cut the plain. The same people whose hands later left ochre on cave walls. Painters of beasts and keepers of stories. They called themselves by the name of their valley. They wore stitched hides and walked barefoot. And their lives turned on two things. The fire that spoke to their bones. And the hunt that fed their children. The elders remembered stories of storms and long runs. The youngest learned to read the spore of animals like rivers on the ground. One spring, when the herds moved close and the night still bit with frost, a lion came down from the high ridges. It was not the small cat they had once driven away. This beast was vast, with shoulders like fallen logs and a coat the color of dried blood. Its roar rolled like thunder and the hunter's dogs, those first companions of humankind, fled to the trees. At first the lion kept to the outer grass. Then one dawn it slipped among the sleeping pens and carried off an old woman's goat. Another night it took a boy's lamb. The band's children woke to empty pens and empty bellies. Fear spread through the camp like smoke. The clan's leader, Cora, called the hunters together. She was old in the way of elders who had led long hunts and mended many wounds. Not brittle, but steady as the river stones. This beast takes more than meat, she said. It takes our calm. If we bow our hearts to fear, the valley shrinks. We will stand for our kin.